Hey, what's going on people? I hope you guys are doing good. Today, we're gonna to be talking Galaxy Z Fold 4, and we're gonna go over 10 things that you should do as soon as you get your new foldable phone. But before we get started, I do have a couple things. First and foremost, if you're in the market for one of these new foldable phones, if you could please use one of the links found in the description of this video, I do get a small portion back and it helps support the channel, including content like this, which I know you guys love. Also, any item that I discuss in this video, those links can also be found in the description. And lastly, huge thanks to Motion VFX for sponsoring a portion of this video. Okay, so the first thing that I recommend that you do is pick up a few accessories. So let's go over some of the accessories that I picked up for my Z Fold 4. Now, some of them have not shipped yet, but I'm gonna link them anyways in the description. The first thing that I recommend that you pick up is a screen protector for the cover screen on the Z Fold 4. This one's from Whitestone Dome. It does a good job, it has excellent clarity. So if I log into my phone here, you can see it shows the phone screen really well. It doesn't interfere with touch sensitivity whatsoever. And it's really affordable. I'll link it down in the description if you feel like checking it out. It doesn't go edge to edge, but it does cover the full display. But overall, I think it's fine, especially for the price. The next accessories I recommend that you pick up are a case. You definitely need to get a case for this phone. Unfortunately, the cases that I purchased have not arrived yet, but I purchased a case that holds the S Pen, which we'll talk about more here in a minute. And I also picked up a case that doubles as a phone stand. So whenever I'm watching content, when the phone is unfolded, I can prop it up on a tabletop and still be able to see whatever it is I'm watching. I'll link both of those cases as well as a couple others in the description. So that way you can check them out and see if they're right for you. Now going back to the S Pen, I recommend buying the S Pen with a case. I don't recommend buying it on its own. It's a great stylus and it does its job. It doesn't have Bluetooth controls. If you're just looking to be able to doodle on your screen and just basic controls, this is the pen to get. But like I said, make sure you get it with a case. The last accessory that I wanna show you is this little camera cover from Whitestone Dome. It's made of aluminum and it just protects the camera bump. Of course, if you're getting a case and it's relatively thick, you won't need this, but Temporarily, while I wait for my case, I wanted to put this on there in order to prevent any scratches from occurring. But it's really cheap, really affordable, and it just gives you an extra layer of protection. So I definitely recommend it. So those were a few accessories that I recommend you pick up. Now let's talk about number two, which is all about customization. But before we get into that, let me tell you a little bit more about this video's sponsor, Motion VFX. I use Motion VFX in every single video. They offer a wide range of plugins and templates for Final Cut Pro users like me. They have everything from titles, animations, transitions, overlays, 3D modeling, and even color grading plugins. In fact, this entire video was color corrected and graded using M-Film Look since it's an easy way to convert log footage to Rec. 709 and add corrections. It even features built-in lens flares, film grain, lens blurs, and more. To finish it off, you can slap on a LUT or you can use an M-Film Look preset which can change the aspect ratio of the footage for a more stylistic look. Most of the titles and overlays have built-in mocha tracking for getting cool shots like this. You can really turn a boring handheld shot into something much more impactful. Everything is super simple to use. It requires very little work for great looking effects. I'll drop a few links in the description so you can check out the ones that I use routinely. So now that the bills are paid and you picked up some really dope ass plugins, let's talk about how you can customize your Galaxy Z Fold 4 with icon packs, wallpapers, and themes. If you're a seasoned Samsung user, then this is gonna come as no surprise to you. But if you're new to Samsung, what you need to do is go into your settings, then go under themes, and then go into the Galaxy Theme Store and find yourself a really cool theme or a new wallpaper or an icon pack or even an always on display. There's tons of ways to customize your phone inside the Galaxy Theme Store. There's a lot of free stuff. Some things you do have to pay for, but they're like $1.99, maybe $2.99 at the most. For the most part, they're pretty affordable, and it's just a great way for you to add some personalization to your Z Fold 4. Now that's the basic way to customize your Z Fold 4. If you wanna take it up a notch, like you can see I have a really unique icon pack down here. I also have a Vegeta wallpaper. I even have a motion wallpaper on my lock screen when the phone is unfolded. And I even have a different wallpaper for my cover screen and a different live wallpaper for the lock screen on my cover screen. Like I really took it all the way when it comes to customization. But if you want to get this unique icon pack or any icon pack in the Google Play Store, you can download something called Goodlock, then download Theme Park. 
Once you have both of these downloaded, you can go inside of Theme Park, then go under Icon, and then you can import your own Icon Pack that you downloaded from the Google Play Store. So you're not limited to just Icon Packs in the Samsung Theme Store. This is something that I recently learned from several uh, viewers of the channel, and I really appreciate the feedback because this definitely solves one of my biggest gripes when it comes to customizing Samsung phones. So make sure to do this if you have a lot of Icon Packs that you've already paid for inside the Google Play Store. When it comes to my wallpaper, if you want to download some really awesome anime wallpapers, whether they're static images like the Vegeta one you see here, or live wallpapers like on my lock screen, you can download a couple apps. For static images, I use HDQ Walls. They have tons of really awesome wallpapers to choose from, everything from anime, Marvel, different cartoons to like nature, tons of categories as you can see. So you shouldn't have a problem finding a static image using HDQ Walls. It's also a free app inside the Google Play Store. If you want to get some really cool anime live wallpapers, you can download Anime Wallpaper. And this is an ad supported app, so it's still free, but you do have to view ads in order to get the most out of it. So we're going to do a quick search for Dragon Ball, and I can show you some of the live wallpapers here. So at the top, we have all wallpapers and then live. I'll tap on live, and these are all of the really dope live wallpapers. So if I tap on one, you can see it's like a little video. And from here, I can view an ad and download this wallpaper and apply it to my lock screen, which is exactly what I did. Really cool app, again, free, but there are tons of ads in order to download and view certain wallpapers and things like that. But if you're okay with viewing ads, you're gonna love this app. The next thing that I wanna talk about is the taskbar. Now, this is a new feature on the Z Fold 4, and it is software implemented, so hopefully it does come to the Z Fold 3. But Samsung worked in partnership with Google to provide a unique experience known as Android L for larger screen devices, tablets, and of course, foldables. And with the taskbar, it brings multitasking to the next level and really provides a more desktop-like experience on your phone. Let me show you. If you want to access the taskbar settings, we're gonna go into our main settings. Then we're gonna do a quick search for taskbar. Tap on it. Then tap on it once more. And then inside of here, we can toggle it on and off. We can have it show our recent apps. And then we can toggle on and off the show and hide with the touch and hold function. So let me show you how this works. So if I want to do some multitasking, I have the taskbar down here on the bottom. I can grab an app like Chrome, bring it to the right side of the display. Then I can grab Gmail and drag it to one of the lower portions on one side. So we'll put it over here and then we'll put Chrome back up because I completely screwed that up. So there we go. So now we have a three-way split. We have our settings over here. We have Chrome and then we have Gmail. Now, from here, I can also touch and hold on the corner here to hide the taskbar. So if I do a touch and hold, you can see it's disappeared. Then if I touch and hold once more, it pulls it back up. Now I completely erased all the apps that are running in the background. So let me go ahead and pull some up for you. Then minimize, we'll pull up Gmail. And you can see right here, the little settings icon is now popping up inside of the taskbar, which is showing me my recent apps. So I can switch back and forth from the app that I just had open to my previous app. So this just allows me to bounce back and forth really fast and actually do plenty of multitasking. I really appreciate the taskbar and it's definitely a welcome feature on the Z Fold 4. I just hope that they push this out to the Z Fold 3 since it's pretty much just a software uh, feature anyways. I almost forgot to mention that the apps in the taskbar are mirrored from your app dock. So whatever apps or folders you have in your app dock will be carried over into the taskbar. So this is how you can customize the apps that are being shown. So the next thing that I recommend that you do is dive into the main settings, go under advanced settings, and then check out the lab section. There's a lot of useful stuff in there for multi-window that I think that you should try as soon as you get your phone. So let's talk about those now. So to access these advanced features, we're gonna go into our main settings. We're gonna scroll all the way down until we get to advanced features. Tap on that, then tap on labs. From here, we have different settings such as multi-window for all apps which is gonna force all apps to be able to go into split screen and really dive into the multitasking and things like that. So I definitely toggle that on, it's really useful. Then we have full screen and split screen view. I toggled this off because it interferes with the taskbar functionality. So if this is turned on, you will not be able to do a three-way split using the taskbar, which is kind of annoying. So it just works better when that's turned off. Then you have show, show multi-window menu with one window. What this does is it adds that little bar up at the top. So if I toggle it on, you can see the bar. If I tap on that bar, 
you can see I can go into split screen or I can shrink it to a small little window. So that's really useful. So I went ahead and left that toggled on. Then we have swipe for pop-up view. So if I swipe from the corner here down, so we'll go here and then swipe down like so. You can see I go into pop-up view. Doesn't work the best using the little line up at the top works a little bit better, but I went ahead and toggled it on, you know, just to try it out. Then we have swipe for split screen. So if you wanna do split screen and just by simply swiping, you could take two fingers and then swipe up and then it will put you in split screen. Really useful gesture, especially if you use that feature a lot. So I went ahead and toggled it on. Then we have auto rotate apps. So from here, you can select what apps will automatically rotate. Whether you want them to rotate, you can adjust the app aspect ratio, a lot of other stuff inside of here. Then we have flex mode panel. From here, we can force apps into flex mode. So certain apps do not support it. And by toggling on multi-window for all apps, you'll actually get full support here. But keep in mind, just because you force support onto an app doesn't mean that it's going to have the best quality in flex mode. An example of this is Call of Duty. When trying to use it in flex mode, it just looks awful. But if you go into an app that does support flex mode, such as Calendar, so let me go ahead and pull up the calendar here and give you a quick example of flex mode. So if I go into my Samsung folder, pull up the calendar here, and then slowly bend the foam, it will actually put me into flex mode. So you can see I have the calendar up top and then I have the ability to add like a sticker or add an event down here on the bottom. And then by undoing the foam, it takes me out of flex mode and brings me back into a normal view. So these are a lot of really cool features that you can dive into within the advanced features and lab section. Definitely suggest going in there and tinkering around and messing around with them. So the next thing that I want to talk to you about are the new cameras on the Z Fold 4. We finally have an excellent camera system on a foldable phone from Samsung. We actually have the Galaxy S22 Plus camera system. And as you can see by these pictures right here, it's not bad whatsoever. There's a lot of great benefits that come with this new camera system that I want to go over. So let's talk about those now. So inside the camera app, one of the biggest advantages to having this large foldable display is a viewfinder. Like look how massive that viewfinder is. And it's great for seeing exactly what you want to take a picture of. But if you want to use it in a more practical way, in the top left, you could tap on that little symbol. Then it moves the camera app over to the right hand side. And then on the left hand side, when I snap a photo, I can view that photo right away. I can zoom in. I can check out that shot. I can see what I did or didn't do right or wrong. I can delete the photo if I don't want it. And it just gives me a preview right there right away and I really really like that especially just you know utilizing this massive display. Another new feature on the Z Fold 4 that comes with that new camera system is the ability to shoot in 8k. So I'm under video mode inside the camera app if I tap up at the top where it says UHD 30 I can switch to 8k 24 and this is something that you know I've been waiting for. I absolutely love the fact that now we can shoot 8k video on a foldable phone and the quality looks really good considering it's the same camera system as the S22 Plus. Here's a few samples so that way, you know, you know what to expect if you're picking up this phone. Another really useful camera feature when it comes to using a foldable phone like the Z Fold 4 is the cover screen preview feature. So to turn this on, you see like a little symbol in the top right, just toggle that on. And now when I turn the phone over, I can see myself in the cover screen and utilize the most capable sensor on the phone, which is the main sensor on the back. It's that brand new, a larger 50 megapixel sensor that's capable of doing 8K video as well as producing 50 megapixel stills. It's definitely the best sensor on the entire phone and I can use it to record video of myself as well as to um, you know take selfies and portrait mode shots and things like that. So a really useful feature, one of my favorite features. However, Samsung crippled it a little bit because they don't allow you to use it with 8K video. So if I try to switch to 8K24, you can see the cover screen feature is now grayed out. So unfortunately, that doesn't work. Maybe they can push out an update to unlock it, but as of right now, you can see it just doesn't work. However, you can still do 4K 60 frames per second using the main sensor and all the way down to HD 30. But like I said, it's a really useful feature. The next feature that I wanna talk about is auto framing. And while auto framing isn't necessarily new, if you're new to Samsung, then you really need to check out this feature. So. Inside of the video mode, you'll see like this little box in the bottom left hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and tap on that. 
that's going to toggle on auto framing. Now it only works in 1080p, but it's still a really cool feature. But when you pair it with a foldable phone like the Z Fold 4, it takes it a step further. So now I'm going to put the camera app into flex mode just by simply taking the phone and then flexing it so it's like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and angle the phone slightly up. I'm going to tap record, and then I'm gonna set the phone down here. Now with auto framing, what it does is it's going to crop in on the sensor as soon as it detects me, and it's going to track me in order to keep me center frame. This is just a really good feature for people that vlog or do social media videos and things like that, because it allows the camera to do all the work, zoom in, zoom out, and keep me well, center frame. This is a lot like um, uh, the Apple feature, which is center stage when you do FaceTime calls and stuff, except this is doing it inside the camera app so that way you can record the video. So let me know what you think of auto frame. So there's a lot more that this camera system can do. So if you wanna see a dedicated camera tips and tricks video, let me know. Granted, a lot of these features are carried over from the Z Fold 3, but if you're new to the Z Fold series, this video might be relevant to you. So let me know if you wanna see it. So we've gone over a few new features on the Z Fold 4. Now let's talk about a few features that have been carried over from the Z Fold 3. That way, if you're a new Fold user, you can get the most out of this phone. And these are very practical features. So let's talk about those now. So one of the advantages of having a foldable phone like the Z Fold 4 is the wide expanded view on the interior display. So viewing content and reading things is just a great experience. It's like almost a tablet. So right now I'm researching the A7R5 leaks and I can view it in Chrome and it's almost like a desktop-like or tablet-like experience. I can catch up on all my reading. But let's say I'm on public transit and my stop is coming up and I don't wanna walk around with my phone like this because there's a good chance I might drop it. I can close it, continue reading where I left off right on the cover screen. This is a great feature, but unfortunately it's not enabled by default. Let me show you how to turn it on. What you're gonna do is go into your settings. Then you're gonna do a search for cover like so if I can learn how to spell and then right up here at under display it says continue apps on cover screen tap on that tap on continue apps on cover screen and toggle all apps on so now no matter what app I'm using such as Gmail here if I close my phone I can pick up from where I left off and as long as all apps is turned on, this will work for any app that I have open. So I can go and pull up my app drawer here and go under, we'll say something like uh, YouTube Music. I'm not logged in, but um, there's YouTube Music. I can shut my phone and there it is. Great feature. I definitely recommend that you enable it. The next feature I wanna talk about is called cover screen mirroring. Now this is great for people that want a very cohesive experience in terms of their app layout. So you can see that this is my app layout on my cover screen. And then when I open up my phone, you can see I have like a couple additional apps down here, like my camera app, for example. But let's say I have like a bunch of different apps on the inside, and then I keep things simple on the outside. So if you want to keep things different, like I just said, then you're not gonna wanna use this feature. But if you wanna keep things very cohesive, like you want the same apps on your cover screen as your interior display, you're gonna wanna turn on cover screen mirroring. To do that, you're gonna go into your settings. We're gonna do a search for cover. You can see cover screen mirroring right up here at the top. I'm gonna to go ahead and tap on that. Tap on cover screen mirroring, toggle it on, and then hit apply. So now, if I go to my interior display, you can see I have only four icons on here on the bottom. And then I have my two folders and they're only taking up a small portion of the display because it's mirroring my cover screen, which is a smaller display. So I personally like to keep things separate, but like I said, if you like that cohesion, you can definitely use cover screen mirroring. So I've said a million times in the video how good the Z Fold 4 is to consume content on, simply because it's like a tablet display. So that means it's great for reading books, for catching up on articles and news, and also streaming. So if you wanna play games or if you wanna stream movies or shows, it's just a fantastic device. The great thing is you don't have to have a streaming service like installed on here. You don't have to have a subscription or anything like that. And no, I'm not talking about YouTube. You actually have Samsung free, which gives you free content. You can access it a couple different ways. First and foremost, if you long press on your home screen, swipe over, you can select Samsung free. And then that replaces your Google Now feed. And from here, you can take a look at all of the free content that is included 
by Samsung. This includes TV shows and movies under watch. You can go under listen and listen to different articles, audiobooks, things like that. You can go under read and you can read different news articles, magazines, and even books. You just have to dig around a little bit. And if you tap on play, you have tons of free games. And you can even download things to play offline if you choose to do so. If you wanna access it the other way and leave your Google Now feed alone, you can go into your app drawer and just tap on Samsung free. Definitely worth a look, make sure to check it out. This next feature I haven't seen on other Galaxy devices, including the Z Flip 4. So I don't know if it's an exclusive to the Z Fold 4 or if it's coming later to these other devices, but it's called sound notifications and it's pretty cool. To turn it on, you're gonna go into your quick toggles, tap on the three little dots, tap on edit buttons, and you're gonna find it up here at the top and then drag it down. I've already added it, it's right here. It's called sound notifications. Once you add it, tap done, go ahead and toggle it on. And what this does is it uses the microphones that are used for live transcribe and it's looking for different sounds and it will notify you if it, if it hears like an emergency sound or uh, specific sounds like a baby crying, things like that. So to test this out, I actually have my iPhone here and I have a police siren pulled up. So I'm gonna go ahead and close my phone and set it down. Now I'm going to play the siren. Yeah, we don't wanna do anything to scare your children. That's the last so thing we want give it a minute here. and my phone is vibrating. So if I open it up, we'll go ahead and stop this sound. You can see the notification right here. It says this sound is detected nearby. If I tap on it, you can see it's detected a siren. The last thing that I wanna talk about are a few gestures. This includes being able to use the fingerprint scanner, swipe down on it, and pull down your notification shade, and then swiping up, we'll push it back up. To access these gestures, you're gonna go into your settings, tap on the little search symbol, do a search for gestures. You'll see motions and gestures pop up under advanced features. Just tap on that. Then tap on motions and gestures one more time. And these are a list of different gestures and um, motions that you can do. This includes like lift to wake your screen. So when you lift your phone, the screen will automatically turn on, double tap to turn on your screen, and then double tap to turn off your screen palm touch to turn off the screen. So if you do this, it'll turn off your screen. Um, it will use the front facing camera in order to detect your eyesight. So if you're looking at your screen, it will always keep the screen on um, versus like if you have this toggled off after two minutes or 30 seconds, your screen might um, dim and then eventually your phone will lock. So um, this is actually a pretty good feature to use. I just don't toggle it on because it does drain the battery a little bit faster since you're utilizing the front facing camera. You also have alert whenever your phone is picked up, so you'll get a vibrate depending on if you have a missed call or message. Um, you can mute the phone with gestures. Then you have your fingerprint scanner gestures, so you can do the notification panel like I just showed you. Also, if you're utilizing Samsung wallets, you can swipe up on the fingerprint scanner to pull up your Samsung wallet when on your home screen. If I go back, you also have palm swipe to capture, so you can take your palm and kind of like swipe it across the screen, and it will take a screenshot. There's a few other features buried inside of here that you can uh, tinker around with, but these are the basics. And ultimately, like it just makes your phone a little bit more usable. You can see I have a lot of mine turned off just because they're not um, useful to me, but you might gain some benefit out of them. So definitely check them out. So there you go. That was 10 plus things to do as soon as you get your Galaxy Z Fold 4. Let me know what else you wanna see covered on this phone, including comparisons, tips and tricks, and other walkthroughs. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Links to everything can be found in the description. Don't forget. And if you do wanna pick yourself up a Z Fold 4 or a Z Flip 4, make sure to use my links as it does show support to the channel. Other than that, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment down below, and I will see you beautiful people in the next one because it is about to rain i got to i gotta get out of here so um i'll see y'all later i'm going home